Hey everyone, Kevin with New Standard here again, uh, back at Greenwald Colony, working today in the uh, Sal Barn or having a look. Uh, just wanted to give you a little bit more of a detailed tour here before we really get into it. Maybe go and uh, cover more of the details that, that I've got some questions on. So let's get to it. Okay, so just to cover everything that we've got going on here, uh, right down from the basics. This is uh, a stall sow barn. One room that we're looking at here, another one on the other side of this wall, basically uh, equal size. We've got gestation and breeding uh, crates throughout, which are these pieces of steel, most of you would know. This is what we're looking at. Uh, keep in mind, for those who maybe don't know or don't remember their history, the whole reason behind these was back in the day as farms got bigger, and uh, they were putting animals together in pens, they noticed they had some problems with aggression and certain animals stealing other ones uh, feed, hard to control and maintain good production when that's happening. So we invented these. We gave them a place to be where they could be protected, couldn't be attacked. We could choose the right amount of feed for each animal and dispense it down to them, drop it into a trough in front of her, we could ensure that each animal got the protection and the feed they needed. All a great idea, done with all the best of intentions, but as throughout many times in history, sometimes there was either a change in attitude or unintended, uh, unforeseen consequences. Uh, I won't debate the validity of any of that, but times have changed. We've got the knowledge, experience, and technology to allow us to put them back into groups. We don't need to actually have them into these stalls anymore for their own protection, realistically. In the new system, they're actually still going to have an enclosed area, dispense the right amount of feed, but they get to choose to come and go as they want rather than having to actually be contained in one area. So we're going to open up this whole area, remove all these stalls, and turn that into one big pen holding a few hundred animals. Now, that is still going to be divided up with some penning to give them private areas to lie down. As I said, they're going to have an area protecting them while they eat and dispensing the exact amount of feed that they need. Each animal will be wearing a, uh, or be fitted with a RFID or radio frequency identification tag that as they enter the machine, it knows who's there and how much feed they have already eaten or how much they should be getting yet for that day. So we can control it all very well and allow them to move through as they please. Uh, changes their attitude quite a bit in that they are more in control of their own destiny as it were. Sleeping when they want, eating when they want, rather than being told. Now, we're going to cover some of the basics of uh, the actual construction side of it here. I know a lot of people would look at a barn like this and say, well, how do you make that into one big pen? Uh, starts with, obviously, we've got to remove all this and open it up. But then we still have to be aware of and deal with uh, exactly what's going on over here. She just had to go to the bathroom, and that needs to go somewhere. Now, that's why we've got these slats at the back of each stall. And that slat basically continues on. There's a pit underneath, catching all the manure and urine. Continues on to this alleyway, which is also slatted, and flows right through to the back of the next row of stalls. That slat across there measures eight feet. So what we'll need to do once all this steel work is out of the way is actually pull up all those slats and replace them. Not because these are necessarily broken or damaged, but they've got way too wide of an opening on the back there. It's just not the right configuration when the animals are truly walking around free. We'll end up with some hoof problems so we're just going to change this to a different style of slat that's uh, much better designed for animals walking around on it freely. You don't have to dig this new pit or anything, it's just pull them up put down new slats. So that's pretty simple. There are some areas we do have to make new pits, small areas, and I'll uh, show you that in a bit. But just to cover while I'm here on an empty row of stalls, where we end the slat here, you can kind of see that, that line, it is solid concrete all the way up to the front. Here we go, showing you that, that feed trough I was talking about before, the solid alleyway, and then again, just a mirror of that that we go from trough, solid, back to slat over there. Now this 
total solid area. Uh, don't have the exact measurements for this barn in my mind, but very typical between the front of the stall, that alley, and then the front of this stall. It's going to be somewhere around 11 feet, um, 10 and a half, depending on what that alley was, which works out very well for what we want to do anyway. If we were designing a new barn, guess what we would have? We'd have slats, a long row like that for a walking and dunging area. And each one of those slat runs, pit runs, would be divided by a solid concrete area for them to be laying on. This will be divided up into some, not pens, but just little wing walls to give them protection and something to lay against uh, together in the small family units that they tend to go to. So we don't have to bust up this concrete. We're going to remove all the steel work. And we're going to pour a skin starting right at the edge of this slat right here. And it will be about an inch and a half up. And then a small rise, about two and a half degrees, all the way up to the center here. Again, works out very well because if you can see on this, let me try to get that. This is very typical again, where that solid goes to the trough, is a little bit of a dip, and then this solid is actually higher than the rest. So it allows us to use what's here, just pour a new skin over top, slight crown to it to make sure that any moisture uh, manure that might get in there rolls off and dries off that area because that's where we want them blind. We want it high and dry. So minimal work really at the floor level to make this exactly what we would build if we had the had to be doing from uh, ground up anyway. Works out well once all this steel is removed. You can see it's just anchored there. Let me get that and just grind that off. This trough can stay in place. Some guys, you know, depending on the price of scrap steel, <laughs> they might decide to pull it up. <clears throat> in many cases, it's just as easy, depending on how it was poured in, it's just as easy to leave it in there and uh, cover it up. So, still got a few girls in here. Oh, there we go. That's uh, kind of expected. I'm a stranger in this barn. They heard me coming down here. They kind of get startled. Uh, you're going to see you're gonna see a difference, actually, once we convert it. Uh, I'll do a walkthrough here. I'm willing to put dollars and donuts here that when I walk through and they're loose house, they're just going to stay sleeping. They're not going to bother jumping up when I come through because it doesn't matter anymore to them. It really, really changes their behavior in a positive way. So anyway, we come to this area in the center where, um, let's go over here where we've got a good view of it, where we basically have, as I was talking about, there's your, your slat to solid transition issue we have here is it goes slat solid slat running across so the lengthways of the barn there this area that i'm showing here right now that needs to be slat as well now that's actually pretty easy to do <clears throat> we just can take a saw where is that there's the line take a saw and cut across this concrete all the way over to the other slat we do the same over on that side and this section just get busted out dug down to the pit floor underneath here and uh, new pit wall with a slat on top we're done we'll basically have a pit running all the way through the plugs are here right at this end anyway we have no problem with drainage that's all cleaned up really well so that one's easily solvable there's always things like this uh you know we got to work around them got some floor heat in place here and piping that's gonna stay we can't get away from that but we can get very creative and make sure that we uh, just readjust it, get it either out of the walkway into a, um, a lane area, bury it in a pen wall and protect it. It, uh, it doesn't need to be completely demolished by any means. It's always workable around. Ventilation in here, this uh, specific one, no big deal. It is uh, maybe not the most modern way of doing it, but it is completely acceptable. No reason for us to be getting in here and redoing ventilation. Sometimes, depending on the layout, we would need to because once they're out and wander around on their own, they'll act and behave a little different than when we're containing them. And they can start making some areas uh, pretty messy that we want to stay clean. So then we have to look at the ventilation. But in here, we, we don't need to. We're able to use it as is. Here's the only other area that we'll need to uh, actually do some new pit work. Again, pit ends there, and then we just got a small solid walkway out to the end wall here. This is actually where the feed stations in the long run are going to be weighted back down at that end. You can't even see through all this uh, feed system stuff that's hanging here. 
But this is where the animals will be walking this way and then they'll cross over. Now this is solid in between here and then to that other slat. That's kind of a return uh, walkway, right? So they have to cross over in this area here and that therefore needs to be slatted so that as they're walking along and, and making a mess, we don't, if we left it solid, it's just gonna get covered with manure, get slippery, and then we got we got problems with all over, uh, you know, be it from flies or animals slipping and injuring themselves. By the way, easily avoidable again, because this pit can be extended out to the end, as can that other one. But then we do have to take this solid area out, yeah. You know, depending on the barn, we're, we're 10, 12 feet, we come out maybe here. We're just going to cut out this concrete and take it down. We've got a plan drawn up that uh, we can use where once we've cleaned out that area, they pour a new couple of new pit walls and we'll actually have slats running the opposite way of those, or not opposite, I guess, 90 degrees to them across here. Crown the floor underneath and do some drain holes and all the manure will run out to those existing pits. Uh, we'll have to do a little bit of research. There's also the possibility that as we dig down here, right where we are, if we are so fortunate as to be directly over a sewer line, we just put in another uh, pit plug or a drop, and now we have made a new pit, but it's got its own drain, if, uh, if we are so lucky. That is not always a guarantee. So a fair bit of work to do here before you're really going to start seeing any difference. Uh, all, this, all this feed system has to go, whether it was a chain disc, auger, doesn't matter, it's all gone. Uh, we'll have a very limited amount of feed conveying, just filling up the ESF or electronic feed stations down the road. Opens it up in here a whole lot. You'll see a totally different view when we're done. My guess is we're probably going to do a little bit of cleanup and, and redo some lighting while we're at it. Brightens it up. Certainly opens up the, uh, the sight lines. Minimal penning, because the only penning we really need is to contain them into the one large area. And then some dividers that give them those little line areas we uh, reference. Lane nests is another name used for that. The purpose of those is just to give them uh, kind of dividers to start laying against. They're very comfortable laying against the solid uh, partition. And then uh, they feel very comfortable, calm, while they're out in the main group. And again, dollars to donuts will catch you another video down the road that'll show them just laying nicely side by side, almost like they're hugging each other. Or as uh, one guy likes to put it, like sausages on a barbecue, but I won't go quite that far. So I think we've got pretty much the details covered of what this is and what it's going to turn into. Wanted to capture a lot of this for you guys simply because it, although it may look very familiar or standard uh, for any of you familiar with barns, some maybe don't know this, but also how it converts. It's, it's not nearly as complex. We're not busting this whole structure uh, apart. Some may think that, oh boy, this is... Uh, this is taking her down to the floor and rebuilding. What's the point? It's too much work. The reality is we're opening this area up, but the structure stays. We're not increasing the size of the building. We're not changing the roof. We're not changing the ventilation. So it actually is not a complex procedure. It's going to take a bit of work to get there. So the area all the way from that wall back to the end of these stalls and I'll maybe walk down there so we can have a, a real concept uh, that's really going to be changed into one large group that whole area it's hard to get a, a full cross-section of the room here with all that feed system stuff hanging in the way which will be gone as well eventually and then approximately from here over back to the end of that row of stalls, that's going to be another pen. In that other room we were previously in, that's going to be one large pen there as well. So we're going to end up with three large pens in this barn. Uh, we've designed it that way to allow us to take the younger and smaller animals, group them together in one area, the middle-aged and sized animals are in another group, and the larger, bigger animals are in another group that's got a lot of advantages as far as usage of the actual equipment but also square footage that the smaller animals obviously need less than the, uh, the bigger animals and therefore we can design the pens uh, accordingly. So a lot of this stuff over here, as you see, they're starting to pull it apart. Some of these pens and uh, whatever back at that end are going to stay. 
this small area of stalls, once they're removed, that's actually going to be turned into a training area where we allow the gilts as they come into the barn, the young uh, unbred animals, as we're finishing developing them, we're going to get them used to the gating system and walking through the system like they would have to to get fed down the road um, in normal production. So we'll have a, a small pen here to, uh, to give them access to the gates for a bit, similar to training for an auto sort finishing barn. And then a uh, final phase of that, giving them access to a station to eat so that by the time they're done in this area and actually being bred and put out into the main groups, then they're, they're already ready to use that feed station. Okay, I'm just back in the first room we had a, a look at. Um, just double checking to see if there's any details that we really need to follow, uh, such as this alleyway that currently exists is actually going to stay in place. So obviously we need a, uh, a way to move these animals back out of the door at that end. Um, so that gets used as is. Again, this front trough, this will be filled up and we will be keeping the slats back over there all the way through to the next. This is the area I was referencing that basically from the line I'm standing at all the way to the end of the barn. I haven't counted the stalls or uh, locked it in my mind exactly how long this is, but that's going to turn into one big pen. Uh, I'm going to house a few hundred animals all together. And although it might sound scary to some, it's actually one of the best ways to go as the larger groups like that, we can give them the appropriate amount of space to spread out. There obviously will be uh, times when two animals don't necessarily see eye to eye and want to start a fight, but that gives them room to get away from each other and the fight can be over. Rather than cooping them up in a smaller pen, there's nowhere for them to go. That fight goes on and on. So we have a lot of... A lot of advantages, not only with our system, but this barn specifically because it was designed originally for around 1,200 sows and the goal is here to, uh, to get them somewhere in the 1,000 to 1,100 range when we're done. Uh, they made it easy on me in that way that I have plenty of square footage. I've, I've got stuff here I actually don't need, uh, but we found some clever uses for. Uh, in most typical barns, whatever the inventory would be, the amount of animals that they could house in this type of a system, we're able to maintain uh, or slightly even increase in some cases the amount of animals you can hold. Reason for that is, is we actually get to use all these alleys. This one here that's on the slats, this one here that's on the solid, that all becomes space for the animals. Whereas right now, it's only when you're moving animals or for humans to walk around in. So with that, in most barns, that gives us the space we need to make sure that as you're converting, you don't actually have to scale down your production. In many cases, you're actually able to, uh, you're either able to maintain or in some actually increase.